I'm back at Castaic for a little evening bite shore action. I uh, got a few different things I'm going to try this time. Uh, picked up a few flies, so I'm going to try to use them, even though I forgot my fly rod. Uh, it's okay, I'm going to try the old fly and float that I've uh, seen on YouTube from BBZ TV and uh, J Dog. It seemed to be effective for them. So I'm going to give it a shot. Um, the tiny little flies I'll show you later, they duplicate the little tiny shad minnows everywhere. So try a couple different things. Uh, see if I can't get something going from the shore, and hopefully maybe some striper action will happen as well. Anyway, I'm going to get down to it because i got to hike down the old trail. One good thing about shore fishing is, uh, the way this lake is, is I can see down at uh, what, what's going on. I can see the conditions, I can see the water clarity, the cover, the drop off. So it's pretty cool because I can see all that from up here, which gives me a good sense of where I want to fish. All right, I'm gonna stop at this little spot and cast out a little bit. Uh, as you saw in the video, it's a little shallow, little drop off, lots of uh, brush and structure, and then it gets a little deeper. Those little water birds are there. There's tons of tiny little bait. So I'm just gonna cast a few times before I get to my spot uh, where I know it's a little deeper. So, I'm just going to cast a few times see what I can okay. do. I got something different going on. Better check my line. Um, it's going to be difficult. Hopefully I won't die. So I'm climbing on these steep rocks here. But I managed to get some live shad in the water. On three different lines. So we'll see. You know, sometimes you just have to be double prepared and triple prepared. I knew this was going to happen as soon as I got here. I only brought one bobber because why not? I never use bobbers. And of course, the one time I use it, it gets snagged on a tree. Now I can't get it off. And it's got my one live shad on it too, which are extremely hard to catch. The first time I, sh I, I fished in this spot, I saw a lot of big shad. But I didn't bring my net because I thought they're impossible to catch. This time I bring my net just in case, but I didn't bring my bucket or my aerator and I caught like half a dozen of them. Ugh. All right, take my shoes off. See if I can't wade in there and get them. Ugh, I'm just desperate at this point. It wasn't at all a waste. Got a couple. There's just nothing going on the surface of this lake. So little activity. It's beautiful. It's a relief from the sweltering heat that we've had. It's a little cooler. Shad are active. I mean, it's calm. It's be I mean, it's stunning out here. Look at my shad pulling my bobber around. Nothing. Can't believe it. No topwater activity at all. I'm sure there's bass here because there's bass everywhere in this lake I found. Um, I'll tell you what, it just goes to show you that you can have the perfect bait and still not catch a fish. So I don't know if I'm just not in the right spot or what, but I've got these huge shad on there. Not a whole lot of those left. And I can't believe I got one on a bobber and one just free lining it, and I can't believe I haven't had a, a fish yet. I mean, that's pretty remarkable to me. But then again, like I said, it's been really, really hot the last couple days, week really, in the hundreds. Um, and I don't see a lot of top water activities. They may have all gone deep. I just find it hard to believe they wouldn't go after these shad, but whatever. So at least I figured out a place and a way to catch them 
So next time I run a boat, um, I can come here and grab some and then head to the normal spot where I know there's lots of big fish and put a live shad in front of them until they eat. So new conditions again, a new plan, new strategy, because I want to catch some big fish in here. All right, well, it's getting about that time, even though this is right when you want to be fishing. Uh, park's closing, so I gotta go. All right, <clears throat> well, I'll probably still post this video even though I didn't catch any fish uh, because it was some important lessons, you know, things that I learned, and uh, I mean, it's all about putting time in the water and learning, and man, it was a tough bite out there. Um, that goal for me has been to catch live shad for so many weeks. And finally, when I do, I don't really have, I don't have a boat and I don't really have the mobility I need to put those live shad in front of the big fish in the locations that I need to put them in. So the place where I caught them, there's a couple of points and drop offs, but I don't know the area very well. So I don't know for certain that there's fish there. I haven't caught any there or anything like that. Probably some small fish because they're everywhere, but so I was able to finally catch the live shad but wasn't able to get them in front of any fish. Uh, and there's no top water, so I had one on a bobber and it was swimming around the lake, looked great, but just nothing going on at top. I think I said it was too hot last week in the hundreds, so I think all the fish are deep. So I think I'd have to put the shad on a weight and sink it down. Um, but anyway, it was cool. I mean, I got to figure out how to catch the shad finally, and uh, now next time I'll bring my bucket and aerator and uh, next time I run a boat, I will know where to go and hopefully be able to catch some giant bass. <sighs> All right, well, I feel like sometimes I work very hard and not smart enough, but we'll see. All right, I will see you tomorrow.